God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. It's a Wednesday afternoon, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, me and my wife like to take out the time and say thank you. And God bless you for how you support this ministry and how you follow us. Everything that you do, uh, we appreciate it and we thank you for it and we love you. God bless you. Welcome again to another session on Divine Insight Ministries. And we're picking up on being a kingdom giver. A kingdom giver, okay, and understanding what that is and how um, that is so effective in your community, in your city. And so we just want to be able to be a blessing to you. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. Also, invite as many people out as you can. We appreciate it. Good to see you, Sister Jasmine. Jazz Mary, I think how you pronounce it, Sister Gardner. God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button. Invite people out. And the Lord lay on your heart. Please do a watch party. Good to see you, Brother Franklin. It was a blessing to be able to talk to you the other day. God bless you. We're praying as you travel from city to city. But God bless you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Good to see you, Sister Journey. God bless you. It was, a, it was a honor and a privilege, and I was happy to hear you yesterday. Uh, very powerful points. I tell you, God just give you uh, so much insight on practical things that are so easy, uh, but you have so much depth, so we thank God for you. But good to see everybody. Mr. Brian, good to see you. Uniquely me, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Payne, God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button. We've been talking about some very powerful things, and so we thank God for it. Good to see you, son. Good to see everybody. Kingdom Givers Part 3. Don't forget, uh, in about eight days, we're going to start our leadership classes. They're going to be on Zoom. I'll be talking more about those next week. I'll be pushing the leadership classes that we're going to have on Saturday, okay? So I'll be telling you more about that. Please visit our website, www.divineinsight.net. Please visit our YouTube page. We have over 700 videos on there. Please go back and watch the replay over and over again. Hit the notification button. Make sure that you are part of the ministry. If that's what God laid on your heart, we thank God for you. We're sowing where we're going. And so this has been a very powerful teaching. We're going to be on this series for a while. Uh, well, we just thank God for what he's doing. Okay, And so it's always a, a pleasure to be able to talk to God's people and understand the power of unity. So let's get ready to move into this. I'm excited. Um, if you didn't watch yesterday's teaching, please go back and watch it. It, it will definitely be a blessing to you. Uh, it's just we're just growing and growing and growing and really understanding who we are in the kingdom. Good to see you, Sister Willis. Good to see everybody. All right, let's pray. Father, we bless your name for who you are. Thank you, Lord. I can feel your presence this morning, Phil even feel worship. So we thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you, Lord, for the oneness. Thank you, Lord, that you speak to us in the midnight hour. And allow us to have sleep, but you're always having conversation with us, and we thank you for it. Thank you for your people, Lord. We thank you for a brand new day. We thank you for a shift even in the earth as you begin to move things and move us closer to you. And we thank you, Lord, for this new strategy you have given us We'll never see earth again the same, nor church, nor life, nor marriage. And so, God, I, I believe that from this we have learned the power of oneness and, and the power of unity and the power of family. And so we thank you, Lord, that your word is true, that all things work together for the good. And so we bless you, Lord, for who you are. And, God, as we embark upon this word today, let us hear what you want us to hear. Let us see what you want us to see. Allow, Don't allow any blockages to hinder us from this word. Let it take root in our soul. And we bless you, Lord, for the maturity level that we're growing in you. We're not children tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. So, Holy Spirit, we're here. We're listening. Speak to us. Wisdom, we're listening. Speak to us. Let the word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We bless you, Lord, for all things. And we thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Bring us together in oneness. We sound angels to our mind, north, east, south, and west, and allow us to grab hold to the thing that will cause us to bear fruit. We have an expectation to be conformed to the image of your Son. And so we thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. Thank you for this daily bread that you have given us. Thank you for connection, Lord. Thank you for hope. Thank you, Lord, that you are leading us as kingdom givers to know what house to enter into, to know who to touch and who to call, to be able to respond to the emergency that is called from heaven. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we now are allowing you to speak to us that our 24-hour days belong to you. And God, we thank you, Lord, that you've moved us out of religion into a stronger relationship and that we are a worshiper every day of our lives and our purpose is always tied to our identity. So whatever we do and wherever we go, we always know who we are in you. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're no longer an hour of a day that we share with you, but you have become our life. In you, we move and live and have our being. Thank you, Lord, for the level of influence that you revealed to us, how important it is for us to stay in that position so that we can become the salt of the earth and the light into the world. So we bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you, Sister Waller. God bless you. Go ahead, hit that share button. Share this on your page. Please get it out that we are on. We are live. This is a very imperative word um, that we're delivering. And I believe that the nation needs to hear how to be a, 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 a kingdom giver. So it's so important. It's so important. Don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, Covenant Couples will be on tonight. Covenant Couples will be on tonight, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I believe God is going to do some things and so I don't know all that uh, is entailed for tonight, but I, I I really believe it's going to be a blessing. And so please come out tonight, share it, covenant couples. We do that every Wednesday, uh, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you divorced, whether you are separated, whether you are dating uh, or engaged. This is about covenant relationships. This is about learning how to work together as a covenant, okay? So very key. Please visit us. Please come back uh, tonight and visit us at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And please share that. You know, many of you who are oh, who are tied to the ministry, uh, grab hold to the flyer that Brother Clarence releases and share the flyer on your page, okay? Share the announcements. I mean, just become a helper in the ministry. Help us spread this word out. We thank you for it. Good to see you, Sister Davis. God bless everybody. Okay, let's move into it. Point number one for the day. Point number one, being a kingdom giver, part three. Point number one, kingdom givers are designed to have influence in four areas. We've been talking about the power of influence. When you are a kingdom giver, you have influence. That's why God gave you what he gave you. And so you must understand the purpose of that level of influence and know that you have it. So you want to influence people in the positive way, in a godly way, and not in an ungodly way. And so it's very important that you understand the level of your influence. So I'm going to be speaking about influence a lot because if you don't understand who you are as an influencer, then you have the power to influence. Whatever God gives you, you'll use it to influence people in the wrong way. Okay, and very key. And so we want to change the direction of the church. I believe the frequency uh, have not been pointed towards Christ. It's been pointed towards man. And so we want to make sure that the influence that God give us don't lead people to us, but it leads people to God. That's the very key thing. I talked about it before. When I grew up, I used to watch this show called Johnny Carson. And Johnny Carson had a, a, a front man in a sense. His name was Egg McMahon. And Egg McMahon, his whole purpose of the show was to announce Johnny. So every time it would come on, you would hear Ed McMahon say, here's Johnny. And that was his whole purpose of being at least out front in the public was to announce that Johnny Carson was the, was the talk show talk show host, but he would say, here's Johnny, and that's our job. I don't care how much influence you have, how much power and order you have. Our job is to say, here's Jesus. That's our whole job. Our whole job is to point them, and when you don't understand the level of influence that you have, you'll point people to you, and they'll get caught up in you, and they'll begin to worship you, and, and then you'll use it, and then they'll be attracted to the things that you possess, and not the thing that possesses you. Very key thing. And so this is very key that you understand the level of influence before God starts to bless you financially, before we move into being in certain positions, because God will bless you to be in a high position on your job. But because it's about you, you're not using your job as an opportunity to influence people. Watch this, to know who God is. That's the reason why you're at your job. You're not at your job to make a whole lot of money. God can solve all of your financial needs and never let, and never have you go to work. God can have people bless you and give you a gift to satisfy all your financial debts. But you are at a job, that's right, to be an influence to them, to be a light to the world. They say, here's Jesus. This is what, because there's people on your job that are depressed. They take pills. 
They have been broken. They have been raped. They have they they have been crushed. They are they don't know what to do. And God placed you in that job as an influence in that position as an influence to let them know who is the savior of their soul. That's what it's all about. And so when you understand the level of your influence, that the position you're given, even when you're given positions where you can help people uh, come out of debt, you you're able to hire. You're able. You have information that is able to release certain things to certain people. You are in that, you have that level of influence so you can influence them that God has made a way. I'm in this position. One of the reasons why I was not, you know, one of the, one of the assurance that I had, even in Corona, even in the Mark of the Beast coming, even in all these things that are being established, one of the, the assurances that I have is that God's people are everywhere. And, and they have influence and they're going to influence. God will put you next to the king so you can influence the king in his decision. There are people that God is raising up. That's why you got to understand as a kingdom giver, you're given this influence. And God now, because of the influence that you have and because you know who you are now, you really know who you are and you know why you're in that place. God is going to trust you to be in positions that you're going to be the prophet that talks to King Saul or, or to King David. When King David gets out of order and mess up, you are that prophet that's in that house. See, a lot of times you couldn't be in the house the way you was called to be in the house because you didn't understand the level of your influence. And you was allowing yourself to be led versus being a leader. You allowing yourself to be influenced versus it being a influencer. You got to know why you've been given what you've been given. And so point number one, you are designed to have influence in at least four areas. And you got to know that everything about you, everything about you, this is what something God told me when I came back to my seat this morning. He said, everything about you is supposed to influence people to know who I am. Even when it comes to you look a certain way, your look is designed, watch this, to bring a level of influence to point them towards the subject and the object of your life, which is Jesus Christ. And so even the way you look, the way you talk, everything about you, the things that you have been through, they are influencers. These are things you use to be able to tell people your testimony, your trials, your tribulations. These are things. This is why you are an influencer, like I said yesterday, because you tasted some things. You tasted some things. You had to drink the bitter cup. You had to go through some things. But the devil have you uh, uh, dubbing down and diminishing the things that you use. There's a reason why you're strong. And the reason why you're strong is to bring about a level of influence. And so you have to understand that. So at least in these four areas that I'm going to talk about, and I've talked about them before, you need to be an influencer in your family. How effective are you as a person, as a kingdom giver, that because of what you possess, you've been given some things by God. You were chosen before you was in your mother's womb, okay? How effective are you in your family? Be, don't be an influencer in the church, but you can't influence your husband to pray. Don't be an influencer uh, in the church, but you can't influence your, your wife to give, okay? You got to be an influencer in your family first. The real reason, and we don't probably teach this, but the church is supposed to train you to be an effective influencer. That's the purpose of the church. But we try to we try to be more effective in the church. The church is where the people who are not lights become lights. And so we train people in the church how to become light. We catch the fish, but we clean the fish. But we don't stay in the church all day long. What you learn from the church should be beneficial first to your family. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You got Paul said, what good is it to, to affect the world but find your, your own soul a castaway? And so you want to make sure that you are effective, watch this, and have the influence in your family. As a man, you you should be an influencer by, by spiritual and godly design, by spiritual and godly character. This is so, infor so important. And yes, it's not always easy. Most of the time, things are difficult when we still want to hold on to something. Okay, and so if it's if it's becoming uh, difficult for you to become what I'm telling you, as uh, far as a kingdom giver or a kingdom influencer, it's because there's something you hold it on. Because the real work is not what you do. The real work is what God is doing through you. The hardest thing you have to do, which is really not hard, is to surrender. If you surrender, you'll come to find out. But a lot of times, and this is why I'm talking about this. Good to see you, Brother Gregory, Brother Reno. I'm talking about this because a lot of times we want to become the controller, but we call it influence. Influence is not control. See, influence is not control. 
<clears throat> we are not given authority to run people's lives to the point that we change them. You can't change people. You influence them by love. The number one power of influence is love. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. If God uses love to draw us, how can we not use love to draw others? And so a lot of times influence will say it's difficult to, to influence people because we try to make them do something. Love doesn't make you do it. Love becomes the light and show you who you are by what's in front of you. See, you reveal the power that's in other people by living the power of God in your own life. And so you become the testimony. You become the testimony. You become the light. And what happens is that darkness cannot comprehend it. So that darkness is exposed and that person see who they are. That's how you know who, that's how you know who you are through God. When Peter said thou art the Christ, he said thou art Peter. You can't know God at a greater level without knowing yourself at a greater level. See, so many times we think the influence is it's difficult because we still try to make a person do what we think they need to do. And they just won't listen and they just won't hear. Well, the question is, how long can you love? Can you can, can love suffers all things? Can it endure all things? Because love will win if you keep working it. You, and, and guess what? Faith works by love. You believe something. You heard something. You know God showed you something in a person's life. You're called to be an influencer. Stay the light. Do not compromise. Do not become bitter. Do not become frustrated. But stay there. And watch the level of God. Why? Because God is the true in, influencer. He's the real. Greater is he that is in us. It is that kingdom mindset. And God going to reveal something something to you, why they are fighting the way they're fighting, why they won't let some things go, and you begin to join in on their struggle to help them get free to become, okay? A real influencer joins in on the fight. See, you've been given the tools you've been given to help the person get free. Very key. And so you have to be an influencer in four levels. First, in your family's life. In the devil fights families. A lot of times, the reason why it feels so God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Good to see you, Brother Michael. The reason why it feels so difficult to be an influencer in your family's lives, because a lot of times, watch this. And I, we don't follow the Holy Ghost today because this is stuff that, that's not even on my notes. But a lot of times, it is because the devil attacks the family the most. If you are in a divine marriage, the devil's going to fight that relationship. If you are connected to a powerful family, a lineage, that there are 12 sons inside of you, Jacob. The devil is going to kind of come after you because of your level of influence, because of the blessing that's on your life. And so whenever you are an influencer to your family and it seems like your family is not listening, it's because the devil don't want them to come together in one. Do you understand how bad the devil would be if you and your whole entire family were beginning to pray together? Do you understand how powerful that house would be? Do you understand that every trick the devil tried to do or on your lineage that we will come together. So he fights the influence of a family. And so a lot of times in relationships, it becomes difficult or becomes challenging because watch this, because my husband doesn't know how to influence me or my wife doesn't know how to influence me. But the first thing we have to understand is, is it influence of love or is it control? Watch this of insecurity. Because a lot of times, whatever we don't trust, we try to control. And we think that control is influence. It's not influence is watch this. I'm going to reveal the light that's in me so you can see the light that is in you. So if I want you to be loving, then how do I influence you to be more loving? By me being loving towards you. And if I keep loving you, guess what? I'm going to reap what I sow and you're going to begin to sow love because that's what I gave you. The best thing to help a person get to where they need to be is to give them what you're looking for. And so if you say if you're looking for more love out of that person, then sow love into them. That's why you're a kingdom giver. Your job is to know what to sow. People need love. You say, he, he need to be more loving. Why would I follow my husband and he, he don't have enough love? Then sow it. Sow the love. Uh-oh. Sow the love into it. And if you sow the love into it, eventually you'll reap love back because guess what? That's what he's been sold. God gives seed to the sower. Whatever God wants you to demonstrate, that's what he gives you. That's what makes you a kingdom giver because you can give what you're looking for. See, you can give what you're looking for. You see, and so, and so what happens is when you begin to give love in your home, then now you're influencing everybody in your home to be lovers. Why? Because you influence them by what you gave. That's why we call it kingdom givers. 
Okay? So very key. And so that's the first part. The devil fights against families. He never wants you to see the power of this thing you possess. The devil doesn't want you to know that you can love them to the point that they'll begin to walk in together in, in vision, in purpose. If a man is not in place, love him into that place. If a woman is not in place, love her into that place. And that's your level of influence by the way you love. And you shall know them by their love. <laughs> okay, that's it, Pastor Vaughn. Sow it and grow it. Sow it and grow it. Sow it and grow it. Okay? So very key. So you must understand that. So the family is the first the first vehicle in which we must have an impact as a influencer. Okay? We're kingdom givers, which means the kingdom principles need to be seen first in the home. Okay, in the home, and the devil challenges this. He don't want the wife to see the husband as the priest of the home. He don't want the husband to see the wife as as his helpmate. Okay, and so a lot of times the kingdom giver, what happens is a lot of times we're more effective at church than we are at home. I never want my wife to see more from the pastor than what she sees in me. I never want to see more in other women ministers than I see in my wife. I want to be able to know that the level of kingdom giving starts at home. I never want to be a blessing to somebody outside of the house more than a blessing to those in the house. Okay, very key. So kingdom blessers, blessers or kingdom givers, they start at home, must have an impact. And just because you're busy don't mean you're effective. You need to know how effective are you as a kingdom giver? Is it working? What are you building? The problem is a lot of times you're doing things because we like to have a meeting about a meeting. Stop meeting about meetings and, and learn to start building. We got to build. See, kingdom givers build. I'm not just doing this just to do it. I'm not just saying this just to say. I come on every day, five days out of a week, because we're building something. We're building something. Let every joint supply. I've been given something so we can build something. I've been given this level of influence so we can establish something. I've been given this level of influence so that there could be a manifestation of what I say I should be able to see. I shouldn't say let there be light and there's no light. See, and so it's very key. You are an influencer. There are things in your family that if you would step into your place, you can build your family to this place. You can build them to a strong economical system in the family. You can build them to strong spiritual platforms in the family. If you would step up to the plate as being an influencer. You as a woman, the Bible says a wise woman builds a house. And so most time we get, uh, what most time women don't, then they don't walk into their, their influence as a woman. You've been given, you've been given the ability to become kingmakers. You, you, you are a kingmaker. Watch this. Crowning, but don't, crowning, but crowning king. Don't, don't, don't crown him. Watch this. Don't kill him, but crown him. That's what you be called. That's your level of influence. That's why God trusts you. That's why the devil came to Eve. He knew she could influence Adam to eat. See, and so when you understand that because the kingdom, the kingdom is within us to be able to lead, to be able to draw people, not drag them, but draw them through love. And so when you understand that, a lot of times you're complaining, God, I feel the Holy Ghost today. You're complaining about where your family is not or where your house is not, but you as an influencer is not stepping up to the plate and getting it done. Getting it done as an influencer. You can do it. You can do it. If you say it, they'll go. If you declare it, it'll get done because of who you are. You must know that and use that level of influence, not for yourself, but for the kingdom. Use that influence, not for yourself, but for the kingdom, okay? For your family. And so you say, I, I know the level of influence that I have. That I can bring together. Yeah, there are certain of you, you are a kingdom giver. You have influence. If you put together the Christmas dinner, everybody shows up. You can get them done. You can do it. You can, matter of fact, your family can have millions. Millions and millions of dollars in the bank. Woo! Okay? Millions. But you can, because you have the influence to teach everybody how to save. You have the influence. You can get them together. When, 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 when somebody died in your family and they didn't have no insurance, you organize it and pay for the casket. You got everybody together because you are influencer. See, we don't know the power of that because you are a kingdom giver. There is something God has given you that you must give to the family to influence them to be in their position. What is lacking in your home or in your family because you as a kingdom giver are 
will not use your influences to bring about the manifestation that God showed you. That's why it bothers you when your family's not there. Because anything that irritates you is probably part of your purpose. If it gets on your nerves, that means it's irritating you to activate who you are in the kingdom. Woo! So you don't have all that wisdom and knowledge and influence. So you have to understand that. Another thing you have to understand, you have to understand that that the, the enemy never wants you, and I don't want to move too fast. He never wants people to see who you are and, and give honor. That's what I told you. The greatest, the greatest thing you can sow, the greatest sowing in the kingdom, we think is sowing ties and offering. That's not true. The greatest thing that God requires for us to sow, or the number one sowing expression in the kingdom is honor. It's the highest form of sowing, honor. And if honor is in the house, that's why when we go to Malachi, like I said before, we love to go to Malachi 3 and 10 and say, with a man robbed God. Let's go to Malachi 1. Malachi 1 starts out with, where is my honor? Honor thy mother and thy father. In days me long. If you have honor in the house, then that honor to who God is in those individuals will cause the level of influence to be received. If I honor you, then I can be led by you. But I must understand the spirit of, or the sowing of honor. We don't sow enough honor. I put a post on today. We got to honor the God that's in people. The reason why I embrace people and I don't need to be the only one that preach, only one that teach. I, I don't try to control people because I honor the God in you. I honor the God in you. I sow into my daughters and sons in the ministry. I don't look for them always to sow into me. I sow into them because I honor what God is doing in them. And a lot of times, if the honor is not in place, the influence can't take place. If the honor is not in place, then the influence can't take place. Before you try to build to have your wife be submissive, before you try to tell your husband he needs a uh, uh, be the priest of the home. Make sure he honors you as a woman first. Make sure y'all honor one another. Because if he don't honor you, why sis? in your place that he can't receive from you because there's no honor. And the honor is the highest thing of sowing. And what so happened in the kingdom that we have to repent because we haven't learned to honor the God in us. The God in us. We only want to honor the God in us, but not the God, the God in other people. As if no one else can say it. No one else got it right. No one else needs it. No, it's the honor that allows the level of influence to take place. So I can be influenced by other brothers and sisters in the kingdom. I don't have to know it all. I don't have to do it all because the honor tells me that they have been giving something that I should be influenced by. Because of the, the spirit of love is there. The vision is there. The purpose is there. Woo! Okay, very key. And so the enemy fights. One of the things he fights is, is to make sure that the unit doesn't honor people in the unit. And so when there's no honor in the unit, then the wife won't follow the husband because she really don't honor him in that level. And the, what's this? The husband won't listen to his wife because he don't honor her in that level. The children become disobedient because they don't honor their mother and their father. You see, and when there is no honor, there can't be a level of influence. And when there's no level of influence, there's no building. You can't get things done. There's no true manifestation. Okay? So the first home, point number one, kingdom givers are designed to have influence in these four areas. First area is the family. And so we want to repent and we want to say, Lord, make us effective as kingdom givers. What have you given me that should start in the house? I should start in my own home. I need to know how to be a, a kingdom giver when it comes to my wife. Okay? Very key. That's, and that's right, Pastor Vaughn. Influence is the act of humility. Very key. And that's right, Brother Michael. And if you don't do it, the house becomes divided because there's no honor. So I must stay that my level of influence, I never want to be. And I told my wife this yesterday, I never want to be honored outside of my house. But my wife look at me differently. It's a sad thing that when you begin to meet people, you become part of the inner circle of leadership. You find out the wife don't even honor the husband like everybody else do. Everybody loved the pastor, but the wife is saying, oh, y'all don't know him like I do. That's a bad thing. And it's a bad thing when we settle for the for the for the congregation to honor us, but we don't want to live a life of influence. We don't want to live a life of credibility. We don't want to live a life of integrity that our children and our and our wives or our husbands or our spouses don't give us honor because they see something in our life that is dishonorable. 
That's I, I shouldn't be happy as long as the church loves me. No, I want my wife to love me. Ain't no use of me acting coming to the church and everybody think I'm wonderful, but I can't have that same love at home. I want to have the same love. I want to have a greater love. I want my wife, when people say he's a great man of God, I want my wife to say, yes, he is. Because this same level of influence that he do for y'all and y'all see him, I see that same level of influence in the home. That same level. See? Quit trying to win the saints and lose your family. It's a bad thing when you dishonor your children to the point that they despise the very thing you love. And so you love church, but your children don't love church because you dishonored them to be in church. No, you're supposed to start at home first. The first place that we show this level of influence, mama, you got so much love, you got so much praise, I ought to, I ought to be influenced by your worship that you do at home. I should be influenced by the love you have for God, by how you love me at the house. I should be influenced, daddy, by your level of preaching and teaching because how you lead us at the house. But how can your level of influence work in the church when it don't work at home? Okay, very key. We got to deal with that because the church is the training mechanism so that we can learn how to be equipped. So when I go home, when I come out of church, I'm a better father. I'm a better husband. I'm a better mother. I'm a better daughter. I'm a better citizen. Everybody should benefit from what I learned from the house of God. And so I go to the house of God to learn how to be a greater influence in my home first. And so that's the first place. Then I must be effective. Why this? As a kingdom giver. Influence is just being effective. I should be effective as the salt of the earth, the light of the world. I should be effective in my community. This is one of the most sensitive things that I have with the local church because we're not involved in the community. We're too caught up in the four walls of the church and we're not doing what we should affect the community. We're supposed to be a city sat on the hill. A, a church building is not a city. We try to we try to convince people about the the power of coming back to the church building. But if we were if we would be in our communities, we can still have church in the community because we was effective. But we have never been effective in the community. So we want to stay in this church building, make everybody come to this building. But you don't you don't even know who your neighbor is. You're not spending time with people in the community. There is a poverty in the community. People ain't got nobody to cut their grass. People ain't you don't even know the people going through. Uh, there's crime in the community. There's no coming together. You are not effective. They got people, stores in the community where these young people work at these dollar stores. They got to be subject to being robbed because where is the church when it comes to your community? Where is the church when it comes to houses being broken in? Where if, if, where's the church when it comes to the power of the community of making sure we got proper educational systems in the community? Where is that? But we're so involved with the building that we're not involved with, with people. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to you right now. And so if you want to have influence, I want to know that you have a level of influence to get my street fixed. Come on, we're supposed to be evangelism, but we don't have any street credibility. Jesus had street credibility. He can make a change in the community. Real talk, we got more homeless people, widows homie. That's right, Brother Michael, because we're not effective. If we're everybody coming to the church, come to the church. The church is supposed to come to you. You must come to you. Jesus walked among the people. He walked among the community. He was involved with the community. He sat with the sinners. We don't even know what's going on with our community. And, and so we've been kingdom givers not to brag in church, not to bring our Rolex watches and our gator shoes and our suit and ties so we can look at one another. You look good. God bless you. Oh, you look good too. And people are homeless while you're bragging in church what you have on, coming with the big hats and all that. And I'm not saying the hats is wrong, but when you got a big hat, they don't even have a small meal, there's a problem when what you have on your head is more than what they have in their cupboards. That's a problem when you don't know what's going on in your community. So the whole purpose of this level of influence, you ought to make some influences that you be able to, you should be able to help me do better financially because you affect the community. Uh oh, you understand what's going on. In this community, they're not going to suffer. They're going to have proper houses. We're well, not going to have people that can barely make it, but you're charging them 21% on the interest on their house because there's nobody that's part of the church that works at the bank that makes a what's this an influence how to help people get uh, better houses at better rates all these different things that go on in our community so there's crime going on in our community but the church ain't nowhere around it matter of fact we will move the church to the suburbs and then expect people from a poor neighborhood to support a church that's not even in its own neighborhood you got pastors don't even want to live among you but they want the money to come from you 
you, but can't live among you. This is crazy. Jesus lived among them. Come on, somebody. He went over Peter's mother's house, and when she was sick with the fever, he was able to help her. Jesus said, don't send them home. Send them down and feed them. See, and so we want to be effective. You are called to be a city set on the hill, not a church. A city got a school, it got a mall, it got playgrounds. That's what a city is. We call ourselves a church, but we ain't got nothing but a bus that don't work. We got missionaries that never went nowhere outside of the building, but we want to call this church. I want to know where is where is the ownership? Why aren't you showing people how to make money? Watch this, outside of the building so that their children won't lack. You got to show them how to be entrepreneurs. This is part of the of, of being effective in the community. See, in the community, we should be a city. We should have saved card card uh ship dealers that you ain't gotta buy a car from him. He gonna charge you extra rate. Hell, I love the Lord and I own my own car lot. I'm gonna be able to help you with a car. I'm like, okay, I own my own restaurant. We're gonna go over there and eat. We should be a city. We got our own educational system that have to worry about promoting our kids to wear certain clothes and to get caught up in gangs and get caught up. No, because the church is involved in the community. We're going to make sure. Ain't nobody house going to get broken into. Ain't nobody going to lack. I'm not going to live next door to you. Your lights is off and I got cable, satellite, Hulu, uh, 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 Netflix. I got all of them and you can't even get your lights cut on. But but, uh, but I'm saved and I'm sanctified. This is, this is not the way God designed it. The influence that you're giving, the position that you're giving, the blessing that you're giving should affect the community outside of the four walls of your church. And, and this is one thing that bothers me. We don't own nothing. We keep paying for a building over and over again. And the people in the world seems to be wiser than us. And so you got, you'll go to some of these plazas. And when I was in Charlotte, one of the churches that I went to, it was, I think it was like 25 churches in this plaza. Now it, it was really nothing but one large mall. They divided and built rooms and charged every small church a thousand dollars for rent. Now you got 25 churches, watch this, paying $1,000 for rent, and nobody at the churches had more than 30 members. That's crazy. We could have came together and had a large ministry, but we'd rather be our own island, paying $1,000 each, and the man who's renting the building out to us don't love God, he ain't giving, he don't care nothing about the people, or they care about their money, and we so vulnerable, not only are we paying $1,000 each, for a little space, not even 1,200 square feet. But then we turn around and pay electric gas. Half of the time the air condition don't work. Half of the time the ceiling is falling apart. It's raining in the building. And we so gullible because we don't know how to come together as a church. We don't know how to come together. We are the own our own malls. We need our own schools. We are city. We say we are city. The Bible says we're city. Well, where the city at? Where the city at? Yes, no. See? So our influence should be to the point that we are effective, to the point that the mayor and the congressmen, they should be calling the salt of the earth. When problems come like this corona, if we was effective as we should be, they should say, what is God saying to the church? Because we're supposed to have the strategies. But the Bible says the children of darkness is wiser than the children of light. You know why? Because they believe in a system. We don't believe in our system. Walmart came up with a system that said we're going to put everything in one place. Walmart was able to be one and the church still divided. We still got churches on every corner. This is crazy. But you go to Walmart, you can get, you can go to Subway inside of Walmart, you can go to McDonald's, you can get a bike and you can go get groceries. They can go over and go buy a lawnmower. They can come back and buy dog food. They can go over to the other side and get some children's clothes. They can go to the other side and get some light bulbs. All in one place. And here we go. We got to go to this ministry to get this. Then we got to go to this ministry to get this. Then we got to go to that ministry to get this because we can't come together because who going to be king? Who going to be the pastor? Who going to run the church? Who going to get paid? All this kind of stuff. And it's divided us because we're not effective. And so our level of influence, God giving it to us, we have it. I believe every major idea come to the house of God first. But the problem is we're greedy. We're more greedy than the world. We don't like this kind of preaching. And so we got to learn that my level of influence is not just for me in church. It's not just me to be shouting this in the tongues, and, and you follow up this week, and then I'll follow up next week. And then you pray for me, and then I'll pray for you. And then this week, I say, you got the demon. And then next week, you say, I got the demon. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yes, stop God. it. Then we got to learn, how effective are you in the community? Is the people better because they left the building? Because one of the levels of our influence is to influence our, not only our family, but to influence our community.
Then the next part is we got to uh, influence the city. Change the city. We're a city set on the hill. Every major law that is given, the saints ought to be there to make sure that it matches the kingdom of God. The mindset that we have. We have a kingdom mind in the world. And we begin to watch this. To influence the world to see the light of God's gospel through our lives. Our influence. You're not a secretary for no reason. Yes, you don't have a master's degree for no reason. Mm -hmm. You're not educated for no reason. But are you using your degree to influence the light to come in this place? Okay? <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. That's right. Paint, gun, food, fabric, all in one place. That's right. And here we, here we can't get it. See? Real talk. Real talk. But you know what? God's shutting that down too. We're getting it now. Guess what? Guess, guess what the new church is called? Facebook! We all in one place now. The internet. That's why it's called the internet. It's the net that everybody has to enter into in order to communicate. Media. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Streaming. Streaming. Real income is streams. He gives them four streams. Four streams in the, in the Garden of Eden. Those streams represent there are four economical systems, financial systems that waters the garden, the mind of God's people in the Bible. The reason why God put four streams, watch this, four rivers in the Garden of Eden was it was representing four major streams. Every man and woman of God, there are four streams of income that's tied to your mind. If you can get to that spirit, you'll be able to recognize what spirit, what economical system God gave you so that your garden would never lack. That's why he put him in that garden. And he showed him in that first garden, that first river, it was gold, oxen, it was rich. There is rich places in our minds if we understood who we were and how to release them. I'm giving you all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Okay? Very key. But we got to learn to be effective in our family. We got to be effective. Quit, quit wanting to please everybody else. Want to please the pastor, but you don't want to please your wife. You want to please you. You you want to please the pastor, but you don't want to please your husband. You got more soul ties with, your, with with the pastor than you got with your husband and with your wife. That's out of order. Out of order. Your level of influence should start in your home. Your level of influence then should move into your community. Your level of influence then should move into the city. And then your level of influence should move into the nations. Four major places of influence. And be honest and start. God is a God of order. Let's start first. Am I using my level of influences? Is my children better because of the level of influence? Is my husband better? Is my wife better? I should be at home. And what we do at home, now that family, community is nothing but a collective of families. Now the families, the families, that's why the mafia is called the families. See? We'll say the Rothschild family. See what I'm saying? Gandhi's family, the Jews understood the family lineage. So they was always concerned about the business going through the family. You're going to be in the family business. Yes, God. We're trying to make people be in church business and not the family business. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing is for the family. There was a family before there was a church. Uh-oh, the real church is the family. Woo! You know what the Bible really said? Love your neighbors, you love yourself. You know that neighbor really is your wife? The real neighbor is your wife. She's your neighbor. She's bone in your bone and flesh in your flesh. Yeah. Another, another teaching. So... Point number one, kingdom givers are designed to have influence in these four areas. If you are, if you find yourself convicted in that, begin to repent. As you learn these lessons, begin to repent and say, Lord, I want to know what you have given me as a kingdom giver. And I want to use that gift as an influence first in my family, second in my community. What am I called to do? I pray every day for God to reveal to me more and more what I'm called to do in my community. Am I supposed to have... Am I supposed to have a feeding center for my for my community? Am I supposed to cook dinners and then knock on their doors? Do I should I know uh, at least six to eight of my neighbors' phone numbers that I can call them and say I got some food for you? How am I supposed to be effective? Am I supposed to stand up for some of these stores in my community? Is there some young people that I'm supposed to minister to in my community? Am I supposed to be concerned about in the or, or the recreational centers in my community? Are the people that's working in these stores in my community, are they getting paid a fair wages? Where is the effect in my community that I'm supposed to be able to be involved in, in the crime, protecting houses, 
All these things, making sure that people's grass is being cut. I was a part of a ministry one time, and every 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 week they will adopt this ministry called Adopt the Block. And they would pick a block every week. This is a large church, and they would pick a block every week. And they would go to that block. This is the block. Let's say uh, the block we picked today is 4th Street. And so they would pick a block. 4th Street is the block. And everybody on 4th Street, they would knock on the door and they would say, what do you need done in your house? This is the church now. They wanted to be effective in the community. And if, if they went to people's door and the old lady says, you know, by myself, you know, and, and my wife died five years ago and I never had the house painted. They would pay for painters or see people within the organization that were painters. And they would come in and paint that, that lady's house for free. Because they wanted that, that person to know that you are part of this church in this community. We're not going to have you lack, but the church is right down the street. Right. So they would adopt the block. They would cut the grass. They would fix the steps because they were concerned about the community. When the last time the church did something for you? When the last time the church was effective in your community? Real talk. See? We'll have a revival and tell the community to come to the revival all week and we'll knock on their door. But we ain't never knocked on their door to ask them what they need. But we always knock on people's door saying, you come to the revival, we have a revival this week. We got a powerful prophet. But I ain't seen you. My life's been cut off. You've been in church a long time. You always ask me to come to the church, but you never come and help me. <laughs> See, very key. You have to be able to do that. To affect the community. Now, I'm going to name some people. Before Roger Troutman and, and, and those who grew up in the 60s and 70s, you know who Roger Troutman was. More bounce to the ounce. Don't, don't, don't backslide. Watch this. Okay, he wrote that song, right? Roger Troutman. But when he, when he was off from touring, he would move people in. Watch this. He would move people out of their house, him and his brothers. They liked to build houses, cabinets, fix floors, do roofing. That was one of his trades. So when he was not touring, he would move people out of their house, Put them in a hotel for three to four weeks. Pay for the whole hotel. Redo their whole house. Redo their whole house. Put in new cabinets. Put in new everything. And then move them back in the house. And they would have a house refurnished without having a have to take out a second mortgage. And the rent never went up, but they got a brand new house. That was his way of blessing the community. You have a many entertainers who give millions of dollars to the community. Millions of dollars to the school. We always say the educational system is falling. But when last time you sold into the system? When last time? See, I'm, I'm dealing with kingdom givers. Your influence. Your money is an influence. To be able to influence people, to know that there's hope. There's a better life. You, you have that money for a reason. To, to, when people say, you know what? She was able to bless her with that. Who? What's the God you're serving? Because I'm telling you, when you use your natural influence, it opens up a door to hear about the, the source that you got it from. You are influencing by resources, but they want to know who is your source now. How did you able to do that? I always want to be a blessing with people. I want to do what you do. And you say, you know what? I trust in God. I pray every day. God has saved my life and God has blessed me. God revealed to me who I was, this treasure and orphan vessel. And now they want to know your God by the resources that you're able to be a blessing to them. Real talk. See? Real talk. Real talk, okay? That's the whole thing, to influence that. Now, what I'm about to say, I don't agree with everything this man did, but I saw a lot of godly co uh, characters. I, I was at uh, Bishop Eddie Lowe's church before he passed. I was there. I, I used to go there a lot. Uh, kind of knew him a little bit. I was able to sit down and have dinner with him, sit down and have dinner with his secretaries. And that's irrelevant. But I was able to be in the inner court a lot of times. I remember being at his church one particular time and a person, for some reason, uh, Pastor Eddie Long said, uh, God laid on my heart if you're struggling with a, 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 I think it was electric bill or gas bill, bring it up, and God says he's going to take care of your gas bill. I was there when this happened. And so one person came up with their gas bill, and I think it was like $600. And this is what he said. He said, who here that God has been a blessing to, that you can help this woman with her gas note, that she won't have to lose, you know, get her gas cut off. And one of the members raised her hand and said, Pastor, I got it. Give it here now. And wrote out a check. To the person. I was there. I ain't talking about what I seen on TV. I was there. I was on the side in the pulpit. I'm sitting there going, I have never seen a church be this giving in my life. So when that person did that, 
it created an atmosphere of giving. Now, I'm going to teach you something. When the atmosphere of giving come into church, the real reason why Ananias and Sapphira died, not because God is a murderer and he'll kill you if you lie. If that's the case, all of us would have been dead because we'd have lied all, all kind of ways. That was not why they died. They died because they lied to the atmosphere. The atmosphere didn't need you to lie because it was the atmosphere of giving. Whenever you go against the atmosphere, you cause death. You can get sick because the atmosphere is corona. So if you go outside in the atmosphere, you die out out of putting yourself in a place of the atmosphere that's against your design. And so the atmosphere was given. And so I was there at, at Bishop Eddie Lowell's church. And so what happens is the atmosphere of giving came. So so when that woman wrote out the check for that for that one person with six hundred dollars, then then another person says, Well, Pastor, I'll pay somebody's bill too. So now you got volunteers. I want to help somebody. So the kingdom givers start rising up. The remnant start rising up. And so people say, well, I got my gas bill. I got this. And I mean, it got crazy. People started walking up with car notes, $10,000, $15,000. And people was in the house. Kingdom givers was in the house. The spirit of giving was there. And they said, no problem. I'm going to pay off that car too. And I couldn't believe it. I would never forget that 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 experience because I saw kingdom givers. One of the reasons why Bishop Eddie Lowe was such under attack because a lot of things that he was doing reflected kingdom. Yes, God. It reflected kingdom. And so his personal life has some struggles because he didn't have the right people around him to protect him. When you're a kingdom giver, but get to it, you got to have the right support system because the devil tries to poison what is pure about you because you are too, you have too much influence. That's why your life is going through. That's why the devil wants to get you caught up in all kind of stuff. That's why the devil want to rob you homosexuality. You show me rich people, they have some kind of sexual sin, some kind of sexual struggle because you are too powerful as a giver in the kingdom. And if you get free, my God, your level of influence will change the nation. So I got to come after you, Samson. I got to come after you because you're too powerful. Your level of influence, I got to pervert you. Woo! Are you hearing me? Okay. So point number one, kingdom givers are designed to have influence in four areas. Family, community, city, and nation. Point number two, your character will be attacked by the devil and through people because of your influence. You got to know that. You got to understand who you are. Good to see you, Sister Duggar. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. The devil wants to hurt you because if he can hurt your credibility, then people won't trust your credit. When you have, when you're not credible, they said, no, I don't trust him. He's not credible. That's why the banks won't give you certain money. When you not when you don't have any integrity, you don't pay on time. They say, no, you have bad credit, which really means you're not credible. Which means that your light is not consistent. We don't know if your word is a covenant. When you make a vow, you won't keep yours. You don't have discipline. You're not a disciple. Yes, See what I'm saying? And so you got to be credible. And so a lot of times you have the ability, but the devil has hindered your credibility in the eyes of people because of how you live. And so the devil tries to attack. That's why he lie on the best people. If you really have powerful influence, this is what they do when it comes to running for a president. They try to attack the credibility of the person because if he get in office, his level of influence so we got to make him not credible so the people won't vote for him. So the devil always at the time you've been born because you are influenced in the kingdom. If you come, listen, you was able to, you influence people to get high. Don't tell me you can't influence them to come to church. There are some people right now, they're strung out because of your influence. There's people right now that's messed up because you influenced them to leave their husband. You influenced them to leave their wife. Your level of influence is powerful. And regardless of what team you play for, you are Michael Jordan. And so you got to understand that. So you got to understand that many tax comes on your life because of the level of influence you carry when you speak. People listen. When you move, people come behind you. When you stand up, people stand up with you. You are an influencer. And so many attacks are on your life because of the level of influence. The devil knows you have so much influence, you can cause gays to shut down. That guy, Nipsey Russell, he had influence. 
He had influence. He started to build businesses. And they say that they they say the government uh, tried to kill him or did kill him, set him up, or got one of his friends to do it because his influence. He was about to have a meeting that night or that week. His influence was too powerful. The devil gets mad when you start knowing who you are and the level of your influence. You draw too many people together. What man dies in the bloods and the crimps come together who've been killing one another to come to your funeral? You got influence even when you're in the grave. You're in the casket and your influence is still working. This is powerful. So the devil hates these kind of people. That's why they put John on the Isle of Patmos. He had too much influence. They tried to kill him. They tried to boil him. They put him in, in a hot uh, uh, or wax or whatever they tried to do. And then they poked his eyes out. He on the Isle of Patmos. Talking about, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And still wrote one of the most difficult, most challenging books. The book of Revelation. Because of his level of influence. Why do you think the, the apostle became martyrs? He said, I'm, I'm going to give you power to be a witness. That power is the power to stand. Even if it comes you your life. A martyr is one who dies for his cause. The integrity and the influence that you have. And so we got to kill every one of these apostles. They going around preaching this gospel. Next thing, first it was 12, and then it was 300, and then it was 3,000, and now it's 5,000. Not God. They have got too much influence. The real reason why they crucified Jesus, his influence. He was influencing people. People are following him. We got to kill him. Matter of fact, they had to plan how to kill him because he got too much influence. We can't kill him in front of the people. You have influence. So the devil want to mess up your credibility. He's been trying to bother you since you've been in the womb because you could lead people. Gang members follow you. People in prison follow you. You was in prison and people respected you because of your level of influence. What if God got a hold of you? What if you sold out to God? What if you was in prayer? How much could you influence? You was influenced intoxicated. You was influenced and you were wicked. What happens if you use your level of influence under a holy environment? Woo! Oh, okay. Very, 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 very key. Hit that share button, share this on your page. Don't be selfish. Use your share button as a level of influencing. Many people can come out of bondage if you just hit the share button. You can change lives by hitting share. Okay? Point number two, your character will be attacked because he don't want you to be credible. Many people have the ability to help us, but we have been tricked by the devil, and now we won't let them have any credibility in our lives. This is a, that's why I taught the enemies of divine uh, connection. Because I can't let the devil make me think you're my enemy when you carry what I need. You have medicine for me. You can't die with my medicine in your mouth. See, I got to know that. So anybody that's under attack, I got to see why is the devil trying to make me feel like you no good. There's something that you have that the devil don't want me to see. And I got to be able to see. You can influence me in a better way. See, I gotta, that's why you got to love your enemies because there's some things that your enemies carry. We were enemies of God. Woo! <laughs> yes. Very key. Watch this. Now let's go to Luke, Luke chapter 22. Point number two. Your character will be attacked by the devil and through people. A lot of times people are, are letting the devil use them. The Bible says the accusers of the brethren. And a lot of times we position ourselves to be accuser of the brethren because we don't know the level of influence that God wants to use us in or use them in our lives. But the devil tries to hurt your credibility. Anybody in this power, the devil want to have something on you. He wants to discredit you. He can't take the ability, so he has to mess with the credibility. Okay? Very key. Luke 22, watch this. Let's put it up. And I want to start at verse 31. This is a very common scripture. Very common. Very common scripture. Watch this. Oh, man. Watch this. Verse 31. We in Luke. What did I say? Luke 22, baby? Yeah, Luke 22, verse 31. Watch this. Here we go. Hit that share button. Share this on your page. Keep it. Keep, keep them thumbs and hearts coming up. That help it, okay? We, we're trying to turn. The apostles turn the world upside down. We're trying to turn the world upside down. We're going to do it through the power of the influence that God has given us as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Watch this. 
And the Lord said, verse 31, that when you get a chance, read the whole chapter. But we at verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, I told you, shift, stare, glad. There's a shift. Whenever you see the word behold, there's a shift. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, say, behold, pause. There's a shift. Satan has desired to have you. Simon, Simon, behold, don't keep going in your normal day. Shift, because there is something coming after you. Satan has desired to have you. Now, there's a lot of revelation here because Christ is revealing revelatory knowledge when attacks come to the body of Christ. When you have the mind of Christ, you can sense the attack that's coming to the body. Christ understood there is an attack on the number one leader. Peter was the leader. He represents faith. He's the one that received the revelation. He's the one that's going to speak up at the day of Pentecost. When you have a leader, you're tied to them. If you have the mind of Christ, you'll be able to recognize the attacks that is coming to those who have the influence, those who's supposed to lead others. And so what happened here, Christ is revealing something. Satan has desired. How do you know what Satan has desired? He's a desire to have you. He pointed out who it is, you, that he may sift you. Not only do he knows the attack, he knows the intent of the attack. He wants to sift you, break you down. Yesterday, we, last night, late last night, Sister Nicole was talking about the sifting. And when you sift something, she said she was, she was on cocaine and she had a rock and they were sifted down the powder, down the powder. So when you sift something, you change the form of it. So he's trying to sift you. He says, look here, Satan desire to have you. And once he have you, he's not having you so that he can enjoy you. He's not having you to use you. He wants to break you down. Watch this. He wants to sift you as wheat. Now, I want to walk through, through some things. And the Lord said, first he said, Simon, Simon. He was not identifying Peter here. He was saying that he's coming after Simon. He's not coming after Peter. Peter is the divine name. It's the divine gift. It's the divine revelation. He's coming after Simon. When you're a kingdom giver, your level of influence will be based upon how well you manage Simon, not Peter. It's how well you raise Cain, not Abel. And if you don't deal with the Simon that's tied to your Peter, if you don't deal with your flesh, if you don't deal with your natural life, your influence will be hindered because Simon has been seen and Peter can't be heard. Very key. So he's not coming. This is why you can meet people who can be an alcoholic and they can preach you under a table, but you don't want to hear them because they didn't know how to handle their assignment. And so the devil sifted their natural man, not their gift. They can still preach in gift. They can be locked up in prison like Joseph and still interpret dreams. They can be a homosexual and still get a prophetic word because it doesn't come from the, the, the assignment. It comes from the gifted person. It comes from the gift and gift come without repentance. But the problem is this, that he knows that your level of influence is based upon people's credibility and see in your life. And so if he sifts the Simon, he, he ruins the credibility, not the ability. You still can preach. You still can prophesy. You still can teach. You still can sing. But he, but he ruins the level of influence. Don't nobody want to follow you because you're messy. Don't nobody want to hear you because your life ain't in order. And so now you can't influence what you have the ability to because you let the devil mess up your Simon. Thinking that you was okay as long as you could be Peter. But you can be Peter and find yourself denying Christ. You can be Peter because you don't deal with it. I, I, I preached years ago, about 25 years ago, you have to know how to raise Cain. You got to know how to raise Cain. Cain, the Bible says, when, when God was dealing with Cain, he said, Cain said, what you going to do? Everybody going to want to kill me. He said, nobody can kill you. If they try to kill you, seven times what happened. You can't kill Cain. You got to raise Cain. And most of the time, preachers have lost their influence because you let Cain get up one morning. Cain, and Cain going to try to kill everything that's able. Cain, and you got to know how to deal. Now, you can't kill Cain. You got to tell Cain, no. You got to put your natural man in order. You got to 
deal with that because it's it's not that you don't have the ability, but I don't trust you, Peter, because Simon keep coming to the church. Simon keep taking the money. Simon keep meeting, using the people. And Simon, that's what the devil wants access to. He said, if you in the flesh, I've been commanded by God to eat the dust of the ground. Your flesh is dust. So anytime you are in the flesh, I have a right to devour you. I come, I'm seeking it, who I may devour. And if you are in your assignment, so Jesus comes to warn us that the level of influence is only as powerful as how well you deal with Simon. Yes, Lord. Simon, Simon. He don't say Peter. He don't say Peter here. Simon, Simon, the devil is out of sympathy. He wants he, he want that flesh. He wants to break you down. Yes. And I don't care how powerful you are. And how, how annoying you say you are, how well do you deal with Simon when you get home? That's why your wife don't listen to you because she heard Peter preach at church, but Simon came home and slapped her. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your kids, your kids love Simon at church, but when you come home, Simon runs the house. Simon, that's right, Brother Michael, teach Cain to offer the lamb of acceptance. That's right. And see, most of the time we don't do that. We don't know how to raise Cain, how to teach him what he has to do. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Turn over some things. And so what happens is you lose influence, not, not ability, but you use influence. Don't nobody follow you because they know Simon. Don't nobody listen to you because they know Simon. Simon keeps showing up, putting up posts on Facebook. Simon keep doing things outside the house. Simon keep going out at the midnight hour. And my wife don't trust me because she keep waking up to Simon. Simon, Simon, he said, the saint, saint desire to sift thee as weak. That he may sift you as weak to break you down. To, and if he break you down, now you don't have the power or the passion to even want to be the influencer. You don't want to do the word. You don't want to do preaching. You don't want to do because you've been sifted. And people will come to you and say, my God, why aren't you back preaching? You was powerful. Why aren't you back doing what you called to do? You say, I don't want to do that no more because you've been sifted. You've been sifted. This is what the devil do when you're backsliding. For those who, who are out there, you know you're supposed to be in the house of God. You're not where you need to be. And you say, well, I know God. I'm going to be okay. You better get back. Because all while you're out, the devil is sifting you. And when you and what happens is, when you finally get back, you don't even have the passion to go to church like you used to. You don't even have the passion to sing like you used to. You don't have the passion to pray to travail. I remember, it took me a long time to get back where I'm at now. And I'm still not all the way there in my prayer prayer life because it was sifting me all while I was out doing my thing because I'm church hurt. I'm bad. I'm mad at the bishop. I'm bad at church. I'm bad at people who don't study. All while I'm doing that. What's that? I was being sifted. And so when I finally got back, I was so weak. I didn't even want to pray. I was afraid to say certain things. Uh, I don't have it anymore. You know what? That, that season is over for me. All this stuff because you've been sifted. He said, the desire to sift is weak. But watch this. He know that he got it. Now, Peter is the one. Watch what he says. He said, but I pray for thee. We got to have people that know your level of influence and where you're supposed to be in God. I thank God for my wife. I say it almost every day because she was able to influence me to get back. She was able to convince me to get back to where I need to be. When I first met her, she said, you got to catch up. You got to catch up. I know. I know. Matter of fact, the first time we met, I showed her some tapes of where I used to preach when I was pastor. I was, I, I was done with preaching. This is about seven, maybe seven or eight years of my life that I didn't preach nowhere. Maybe 10. Almost the majority of my life, I think in, in, when I was in Charlotte, I may have preached 10 times out of the whole 11 years that I was in Charlotte. Maybe. And I, I, I was just done. I, I just couldn't believe it. As a matter of fact, yesterday I was thanking God for how he kept me from Charlotte. Because Charlotte was a city that the devil tried to sift everything out of me. When I was in Charlotte, he tried to sift everything out of me. I was just going back and forth, just double-minded, just messed up. And thank God for it. But you got to have somebody that prays for you, that knows who you are, that know that they were there when he said, Thou art Peter. They, they, they heard the voice of God on your signature. My wife saw my preacher, and she said, that's where I see you. That's where I saw you. I said, I ain't going back to that. She said, oh, yeah, that's where you're supposed to be. I said, oh, no, I'm not going back to that. But she kept praying for me. You got to have somebody that's going to pray for you. Because my level of influence, I would, you wouldn't be listening to me today 
and the level of influence that I'm able to have to be able, by God's love and by God's anointing through me only happen because somebody prayed for me. Yes, he said, but I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. That thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Watch this. He said, but I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. He prayed for him, but he's praying more for his faith. Your level of influence is based upon your level of faith. Your, your level of influence is based upon your level of obedience. See, very key. Praying for your faith. Praying for your faith. Praying for your faith. Yes, Lord. See, I know you hear me, Pastor Vaughn. That's a man of God who understands faith. Praying for your faith. You built up your, speaking in tongues, built on your most holy faith. Without faith, is it possible to please God? I'm praying for your faith. He said, watch this, that your faith fell not. You are going to deny me. But your faith can't fail. Even when you are in, when Simon is in a denial state, the faith in Peter has to rise you. There is a faith in the spiritual man that ministers to the, to the hopelessness in the feeling condemned man. He said, I'm praying that your faith feel that. I'm praying that your faith speaks to you, that you come to yourself in the pig's pen, that your faith tell you and remind you of who you are. Woo! That's right. Watch this. He says, he said, and when thou art converted, strengthen the brother. I love this because he don't say if, he says when. When you are converted, not if, when you are converted, when you are converted, your level of influence cannot die in this moment. I'm going to need you to speak up at the day of Pentecost. I'm going to need you to be the forerunner. I'm going to need you to look at the man at the gate and say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give it to thee. I'm going to need you. And so I'm going to let you know that even though you messed up three times, your faith is going to get you through this. Your yes. faith, did you hear that, Brother Hayes? Your yes, faith God. is going to get you through this. So I know what you're going to do. You're going to deny me three times. Yes, you are. You're going to get mad. You're going to go back to fishing, but that's okay. Because I prayed for you and I'm praying that your faith fell not. And I already know that my prayer will be answered. How? Because when you are converted, I didn't say if. I didn't say if you go through, if your faith happened to do it. No, it's not an if. It's not a condition. If is a conditional word. If we get there. He says when. When is a definite promise, especially when God says it. He said when you are converted, which means you are going to come out of this, your faith faith is going to rescue you. Your faith is going to rise you up again. Why? Because the level of influence that you carry as a kingdom person, you saw me, you know who I am. I need that level of influence in the upper room. So because of it, you got to come out of this. You got to rise above this. You got to get through this. And when you are converted, what you do? Influence your brother. Strengthen your brother. Influence your brother. Strengthen your brother. You strengthen him through your influence. You let them know, I messed up. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Can't be honest with where you're at because you still got influence. You still got to do it. I'll talk about it tomorrow. Don't, don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to show you where Peter went back to fishing. And when he went back to fishing, everybody went back to fishing too. Peter quit the ministry. Everybody quit. If you give up, do you know you will draw followers to give up? That's why you can't give up. You can't give up. So when your son, who not even born yet, will hear the story that daddy didn't give up when he messed up in the marriage. So I'm not going to mess up in this marriage because daddy already gave me the strength to know I can through his life 
When you give up, you're tied to people. And so you got to, your level of influence is tied to the loins, the loins that you're connected to. It's bigger than you. You got to influence all those that God has put with you, all the 11 apostles that's walking with you. You got uncles that's looking at you, nephews looking at you. You got cousin members. You got neighbors that's watching how you come through this. You got people on your job looking to see how you going to get through it this time. And because of your level of influence and they see, look what God did for him. Look what he was converted. Now you can say, you can make it and you can make it and you can make it and you can make it. And they will believe you. Why? Because I saw you. I saw you when you messed up. I saw Simon, but I also saw Peter. And you'll find out that after the book of Acts, he's never referred to as Peter again. He's referred to as Peter, 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 Peter and Simon again. You'll see that Simon and Peter was warned. I'm going to show you in the text that many times God would start out talking to Simon. And then the Bible said, but Peter arise because there is a war between you uh, and the I and the me. And you must understand that war. But your influence is going to come from when you tell Simon what to do to walk with Peter. You got to deal with some things because the devil don't want your influence to ever make a difference in your family, in your community, in your city, in your nation. So guess what? The devil desired to sift you. He want to sift you because you got too much influence in your belly, too much influence in your mouth, yes, God. too much influence in your understanding, too much influence in your wisdom. So he desire, you know that word desire in the Greek? Means he wants a one night stand. He just want one night to mess you up. He want one one situation for people to never believe in you again. He wants one thing to be on your credit so that they will not approve the loan. He wants one thing. He wants a one night stand. He desire to sift thee, to break you down. And for many of you, the world is saying he done because he messed up here. One thing, Tiger Woods, mm -hmm. mess you up. Yes, One thing. See? But he said, that's okay. I know what you have. I know what you carry. Do you know <laughs> you carry so much word that God is not really saving you. He's saving the word in your life. There's a word over you. There's a word over you. And God says, the word that I gave you, I told you when I was standing on the bridge, God told me you can jump, but you won't die. He said, I invested too much. You know too much about me. You can't die with that understanding. I'm trying to talk to you. Yes, God. You can't die with that understanding. That will not be your that will not be your obituary. You can't that cannot be. That is not that 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 may be that may be the end to that page, but there's more chapters in the book. Yes, Woo! When you are converted, use the influence. To strengthen your brother. <laughs> Are you hearing me? We don't stop there. Let me look at where we at. Because I, I don't want to rush the next verse. The next scripture I need to go to. I don't want to rush it. So Father, we thank you for this level of anointing. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for understanding. Allow this to be marinated in the spirit. You said if we meditate day and night upon the word of the Lord, we should be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. And whatsoever we do shall prosper and our leaf shall not wither. We thank you, Lord, that there will be no wither today because we don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor says in the way of sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But our delight is in the law of the Lord. And if we do meditate day and night, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for it. We thank you, Lord, for this word to come to empower us. That you have given us a level of influence and you have been preserving us and keeping us and praying for us and interceding for us. Because you gave us something to give. You gave us something to give. You gave us an insight, a level of hearing, a level of wisdom to build. And that's why when we was in those dark places, that's why we was in those caves. You preserved us because you already trusted something in us. The word cannot come back void. Thank you, Lord. I'm praying for those who may even feel like their credibility has been damaged because they got some they got some marks on the credit report. But God, you are a credit financier. You will, 
you will give us credit when we don't even approve. <laughs> it's called grace. Thank you, Lord. So we, we, we embrace that. So it's not over. We can still do it. We can still rise. We can go home like the prodigal son. We can come out like Peter. You pray for us. And when we are converted, use the influence. Touch us, God. Somebody listening right now, you've given them so much. But because of drugs and alcohol, abort, abortion, murder, jail time, they think their life is over. They don't think that nobody would listen to them. They don't think nobody would follow them. They don't think they have it. Too many kids, been married too much, failed too many times. But God, let us know, just like you let Peter know, you pray that our faith fail not. I pray right now for the increase of our faith to believe you outside of ourselves. That when Simon trying to tell us we're not qualified, Peter stands up and say, this is what was spoken in the last days that God shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Son shall prophesy. See, visions and dreams. You showed us something in our subconscious. Let us not give up on what we carry because Simon got it away. Yes, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank God for it. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thank God for you being here. If you feel led today, God has laid on your heart. And you want to sow. Uh, the cash app is there. The uh, PayPal is there. And whatever God lays on your heart. We believe in giving. God gives seeds to the sower. And so if, if it's a dollar, if it's a dime, if it's ten, if it's thousands, it don't matter what it is. If it's a penny. Just create the, create the, the cycle of the currency of heaven. Real sowing is the obedience to a word. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How could I hear us a preacher? And so when you give, you give what you heard or what you have purpose in your heart. If you want to do that and God has lit on your heart and you want to be a blessing to the place, you want to sow a seed where the word is, where the word has blessed you. The cash app is available. The PayPal is available. And you can do that. We love you. I want you just to understand, never stop giving. Never stop giving. Never stop giving. Now, there are many ways to sow. Good to see you, sister. Michelle, God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you, my sister. God bless you. And so make sure you do that, all right? We love you. God bless you. And we thank God for you. And we'll see you tomorrow, part four, on being a kingdom giver, part four. Give being a kingdom, huh? Give the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Monday through Friday, we on at 12 noon as far as this session. But tonight will be uh, Covenant Couples tonight at 6 p.m. If you're just coming on, me, me and my wife, we do a teaching series on covenant relationships, whether it's husband's wife, uh, whether you've been married, divorced, single, in separation, tired, uh, brother to brother, Jonathan to David, uh, Naomi and Ruth. Whatever the covenant relationship is, we show you principles of covenant, principles of covenant. And so that's covenant couples tonight at 6 p.m. And then I teach uh, Monday through Friday, 12 noon until this corona thing clears up now that we hold. 12 noon, I teach Central Standard Time, 1 o'clock Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Tonight at 6 o'clock. Thank you for sowing. We're sowing where we're going. Thank you for that. Uh, and, to, and tonight at 6 o'clock, that's Central Standard Time. Good to see you. Maria, God bless you. God bless you. Tell your husband we say hello. Okay? So make sure you tune in tonight, Sister Sister Hayes. Huh? No, right now. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Make sure you're here. Okay? So we love you. Brother Brian, I love you so much, man. Thank you for the words and the scriptures you put up. You've been such a blessing to me and my family. Everybody have. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay? See you tomorrow. We'll see you tonight first. 6 o'clock, and then we'll see you tomorrow, same time, part four. This is, I'm probably going to be teaching this for about two months if the Lord say the same, because there's so much we got to get into. But first, we got to know who God is before, and then know who we are, and then we can know why we got the money that we have. Never get the money and don't know how much you value. It's a bad thing to have $1,000 on your back, but you feel like $3 in your spirit. Really, you're rich when you know who you are. 
The treasure is you. He said he'll open water and pour you out a blessing. The blessing is you. He poured you out. When you know you, you will see the blessing. You're the blessing. All right? God bless you. I love you. And uh, we'll see you tonight. Walk in God's favor.